Hey guys, how you doing? Saxophone Geek. Welcome. Today we're talking about Florida Lynx. This is my primary. Uh, I've had this for years, but I never played it very much because it was not in the best of shape. Um, it was unrefaced when I found it. Uh, and I had it for a while and it would play okay with one reed and not good with another. Really just not a very friendly mouthpiece and it was a size smaller than I, I prefer on tenor. Um, so I eventually had it um, oh, refaced by Eric Giefenhagen. And he did amazing work. He really tends to not overwork the mouthpieces and take a lot of material off, you know, and, and so you can see it's not too short up here. It didn't get too ground down in the process. Um, but I didn't love it. It was still chirpy. He left a lot of baffle in there and it was also a longer facing than I care for. I started as an alto player, so I generally prefer a bit of a shorter facing than a longer one. And some tenor players really like a long facing and I think that's kind of how it was set up. So I then sent it to my friend Adam Nywood, who I went to college with and he's a good friend and a great mouthpiece play worker and uh, understands the stuff really deeply, great player. Um, so I sent it to Adam, and he uh, worked on the baffle a little bit, made it a, more of a 7 than a 7 star, and gave me the short facing I need. And I really like it. I like it a lot. Um, but as you know, if you keep an eye on things like this at all, they're very expensive now. Um, so I've been searching for a while for another one of these, if you can find one, uh, at a reasonable place, price, because I'm going to have it refaced anyway by somebody like Adam Nywood, and I picked one up, and I had uh, seen this on eBay, the guy had a few up uh, in the nine or $800 area. I put in an offer, and he put in a counter offer, and then I forgot about it, and you know, the, the eBay counter offers, they only last like two days, and it went away, and I forgot about it, and then I saw he still had it. I made another, he had dropped his price a little bit, I made another offer, he made a reasonable counter offer, and I picked it up. Uh, I had sent pictures, I sent Adam the listing, I said, hey, does this look like what I have? Because it's not clear, you know, this is a Florida USA, and we call it that because it says USA there on the shank, right? Um, and there's a certain length that you're looking for. I, there's a lot of things, and one of the big things is the number that the mouthpiece is stamped with. They have, it was a small little number, and then the number gets bigger over time. I'll turn the camera around, you'll be able to see a little better. Um, so if it's a small number but says USA, that's still a Florida link, I guess. All, the only reason it really matters is because if you're trying to get an, a mouthpiece to kind of be similar to what you have, you kind of want to find the same blank because the internal dimensions can be very different from one piece to another. So you're just trying to hone in on what you think is similar to what you have, right? Now, I've been burned on this, but I'm doing it anyway. What do I mean I've been burned on this? Well, I had played a soloist for 10 years. I had this soloist I had done by Peter Scott, and it was my primary mouthpiece for many, many years. And then I bought another one. I bought a blank very similar to it with the small little scroll work on the shank, short shank. And I mean, for all intents and, in, for all intents and purposes, it seemed like the same blank. Well, guess what? It doesn't play anything like the other mouthpiece. And now some of that is Peter's work and the way the mouthpieces ended up, um, <clears throat> they're just different anyway. So I kind of know this isn't going to work, but nonetheless, let's take a look and see what we have here. And then quote unbox this and see what we got. Hyper wrapped, nicely done. <clears throat> scratching the mouthpiece if you can and here we go so let's take a look at this thing and see how similar it looks to the piece that we have well they look uh, fairly similar to me um, this one has a similarly sized number Five star, not six. The USA looks similar. The length of the shanks is quite similar. Blight, bite plate area seems pretty darn similar. Profiles look a lot alike. So we may have done okay on this. If we look through, it looks even fairly similar internally. And that's kind of what you're really hoping for is that it's a pretty similar blank. They feel similar weight. This one actually feels a little lighter. Um, 
but we could weigh it. <laughs> we could weigh them and see. Um, but for my money, these look awfully similar, and that's really good because you don't want to. You, I mean, I just wanted to find something similar to what I have. Now I have not. Play, we're not going to. I might play it. Maybe we'll play it. Throw a read on. We'll use this read here, and they're not the same size because I haven't had it worked on yet. Um, the tip shape is a little different because Adam worked on this one, but uh, you know it doesn't look too too bad. I mean, it looks like there's a lot of. You know, original bra baffle profile in there, I guess. It does look like someone may have worked this. As you can see, there's some discoloration here, which tells us maybe it was worked on or something. We don't know. But, you know, Adam's very, very, very good at what he does. So I'm not worried because um, if when I send this to Adam, he's going to take it and put my style facing on there. And it's probably going to play pretty darn great. So that's the deal. Florida backup mouthpiece. And the idea is... You know, never have someone work on your primary mouthpiece. Have someone work on the backup. And then, if it comes out great, the backup becomes your primary. So we're going to see. But I would say we did. I did a pretty good job of finding what I think is probably pretty close to a similar blank. Even the USA seems to be off to the side a little bit, just like this one. Um, Supertone Master. Eh, they seem really, really similar to me which is what I was really hoping for. Outside of that, this will play the way it plays. Who knows what's been done to it? Let's give it a measure and see what we see. Measuring tools. I picked this up a while back um, before Facebook Marketplace, but this is the Morgan um, mouthpiece measuring kit with the little box and, and some feeler gauges and not the original glass. The guy broke the original glass, but... We have a Music Medic plastic one, which is good enough for my purposes, not not good enough for a refacer, really. And what you do is you take the number zero or the two thousandths or whatever this is. I don't know. Let's say three thousandths, point three eight, or point one th oh, oh, point one five. I don't know how to read these. You tell me what the, which one it is. But anyway, it's the one that's going to fit right in the back of there. And so I'm going to use. Let's do my primary mouthpiece and we'll throw it on here and. Goes just like that. Line it up to the end, more or less. Keep your thumb firm on the table. We don't want to move it around now. And I line not the block up to the end of the mouthpiece, but rather the top graduation line there as best you can. And then we take this and let's see how this is held up. Adam did this for me to about a 46 or 7, and that doesn't look good. It looks like I've played the facing right off this thing. Well, wow, that's this is see this is this is my primary mouthpiece and it looks like it needs a whole ton of work now. I've been playing this about two years, and my feeler gauge is going all the way down. So we must have some buildup on the table. And I've been trying to clean the mouthpiece more, like Adam says, you know. Um, but yeah, we got some issues with this piece. This thing doesn't have any. Facing left on it really, it kind of catches around 46 where it should, but that's not good. Maybe I'm using the gauge wrong. Let me flip it the other way and see. I don't think so, though. Let's try it now. Same deal. It's just kind of slipping in there. So I think what's happened is this has got some buildup on here from playing a lot, and it's pushing the, the facing. But I think the reeds are still playing on it. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, same thing is still happening. We're not really getting a reading here. So, you know, guys that say, oh, you just play a mouthpiece forever. Obviously, that's not the case. Let's put our tip gauge in and see what we get for our seven opening. Now, this is graduated numbers all the way up it, as you can see. And you basically just put this a little hard to see because the camera's kind of close to us. But you just slide this in there, and wherever it stops is about what your facing is. And this we get... 270 and that's millimeters this is graduated in millimeters so 270 is about 101 or so i think so that measurement came out all right but we're not getting a, a back number reading um so this mouthpiece needs to be adjusted okay here's our new hotness and let's see if we get a back number on this so we put our gauge on we hold it with our thumb 
Now this gauge could be messed up too. I don't know. And I'm not going to try to reface a mouthpiece. So it doesn't matter. Maybe this gauge is bad now because it's just a piece of plastic. Who knows? I'm getting nothing on this one either. So maybe just this piece of plastic is warped and it's not a good gauge anymore because I'm not getting a reading on either of these. It's just flying all the way back. So maybe we just need a new glass. Maybe this isn't a good, a good gauge anymore. It's just a piece of plastic. I have had it work before, but this one I'm getting no reading here either. That's crazy. Uh, but let's put our gauge in. Now this is a five star, not a seven. So I'm expecting this to read closer to 240 here on my gauge. It could have been refaced. Who knows what the opening is on this? And that's about what I get. I put it into about there. It stops right about there. And that's about 230. So that, that's about a five. I mean, that's reasonable opening for what this says that it is. It's not what I'm going to need to play it. But at least it says what it is. And it's not really beat up. And it's got a good amount of the gold on it. So this is a pretty nice little blank. It wasn't cheap. But I got a decent deal on it. The guy worked with me. And so that's... Re I'm still going to be into the mouthpiece for quite a bit once I have Adam do the refacing. I don't know if you've looked around anymore, but refacing is very expensive. So put your money where it matters. Find a really good blank and have that worked on. And I'm going to look for a new glass, I guess, because I'm going to assume that both of these mouthpieces should show some sort of back number. Even if I'm playing the facing right off of it, it should stop somewhere. So we got to figure that out. Maybe this is just no longer any good. This might have worked. It's been so hot this summer. Who knows? So maybe I just need a new piece of glass. All right, guys. Sorry for the shadows. It's just the time of the day and I have the light on. I have to check this um, <laughs> this plastic gauge and see if I, if it works on any of the other mouthpieces. The two mouthpieces we've measured were this Florida that's my primary and the new Florida blank. And I wasn't getting a back number on any of this. You put the gauge on as such. And you put your gauge in. And I wasn't getting it. It was just floating down, almost all the way down off the gauge. And it really should be stopping somewhere here because of the facing that it should have been. So... And you, it is real shiny. Maybe I've literally just blown the facing off of this mouthpiece. It's crazy. You wouldn't think that would happen so fast. Only two years. But then, this new one that we got. Now, you could tell someone else worked on the table. This one had issues too, right? So, put this one in. And I'm getting the same deal here. I'm getting just drops. It's the old drop. And again, it should be somewhere in the 48 range for a stock five star. But that's just these two worn out old brass mouthpieces. So let's see on this one. Now this is a mouthpiece I played a lot. This is the Ken Ohatsu hard rubber. I really liked this mouthpiece, a little on the bright side. There's a lot of baffle in there, uh, but nice hard rubber mouthpiece. Let's see if this acts correctly with the gauge and gives us a reasonable reading for our back number. And there it does, look at that. So we're getting uh, around 48 on the gauge right there. Looks fairly even. And it wants to come back close to kind of 49. Yeah, 48, 50. Not quite to 50. Seems pretty even. So that's working with the gauge. Let's try one of these Ted Clums. Here's the one that Peter Scott refaced. This is about 98, almost a 7. Good mouthpiece. Clums geometry his chamber and everything. Really good mouthpiece. A little punchy, a little bright. They're not as wide and dark as a vintage piece. Let's see how this acts with the gauge. And there you go, there's your number. This is a little uneven. I've played this a lot and I'm getting it a little uneven here uh, on the on one of the rails, which happens. But it runs to about what I like. I mean, that's, that's like 46, seven. And it just wants to come down a little bit. It's a little uneven in that direction right there, you know, down to the side. But at least it's catching the... So let's try one more. Here's the 8. This is an 8 Clum standard. Not refaced. This one I played right from Ted. Little, uh, little um, moisture damage on the table. Uh, at the time, I wasn't as diligent about cleaning out the neck and all that stuff. Adam's put a video up about it, and he's right. The reeds are lasting a little longer. I work a little harder to uh, 
clean them. We'll see how this reacts with the glass. Well, not as good. And I'm going to say that it has something to do with the table. So this is coming all the way past 50. I'm getting a pretty bad back number. This is doing sort of the same thing. And I would be willing to bet it has to do with this buildup here on the table from the corrosion coming through the plating. And, you know, on this piece, it's just all corrosion. There's no there's no gold or anything. There's no, this wasn't plated. This is all raw brass. And I'd be willing to bet what's happening is that the, the buildup, the patina that's building up on here is pushing the gauge this way. And that's why we're not getting a reading. Um, so now I'm going to say that it's not the gauge. It's the mouthpieces are messed up. So that's good to know. At least we know that. And then we got this guy, our new hotness that we're going to have Adam do up for us. And I wasn't getting a back number reading on that either. But as you can see, the gold is pretty nice on this. It's a pretty nice blank um, to go in the direction of this Florida. Um, so we'll call up Nywood. It's like, hey, man, uh, what's going on? How you doing? And then uh, we got stuff to talk about. So anyway, that's the deal. I'm not even going to play them. Uh, we're just, that's just a mouthpiece talk. This has been mouthpiece talk. Yay, mouthpiece talk, saxophone geek. So we'll see. So you go, there's your recap. We're looking to make a blank for this, uh, a backup for this guy. Um, but are we backing up a mouthpiece that no, doesn't even have a facing on it anymore? Uh, and then we got this new hotness, which we'll have Adam take a look at and uh, put my facing on it. I prefer like a seven on tenor with a short facing. Uh, and part of that, I think Braganzi said, well, yeah, that's because you're an alto player. So, you know, uh, so I like on tenor, I like that short facing. It helps with the altissimo register and keeping a, a more f flat embouchure, not using a lot of up and down pressure um, for certain things. So that's kind of what I prefer, alto vibe on the tenor mouthpiece. But anyway, so like I said, we'll, uh, we'll keep, I'll keep you abreast as we, as we move forward, whether we, um, you know, how soon we, we get this done. Because at this point now, I would like to see what Adam's measurements say about this currently. And I've only been playing this two years since he did it. The end of the pandemic, I think I got this jazzed up, you know. So that's about two years. Boy, and if you're blowing the facing off of a metal mouthpiece in two years, how are we even playing vintage mouthpieces? Like, I don't even understand. So hopefully it's just my little, <laughs> this gauge is Fakakta. And uh, I haven't really blown the facing off of this. But I could have. I play it every day. So who knows? We'll find out. And uh, this is Saxophone Geek, Andy Volker out of Boston. Um, let me know your thoughts. Um, how much of a chance are you willing to take on a blank to back up your mouthpiece? What experiences have you had? Have you had good experiences? Have you been able to make mouthpieces turn out similar? Or do you find what I find, that they're totally different anyway? Let me know your thoughts. Uh, it's a complex mystery that we deal with on this saxophone gear related stuff so um thanks for watching let me know your thoughts like share and subscribe hit the thumbs up hit the bell thing you know how youtube works all that stuff helps my videos get seen and i appreciate that i appreciate you being on the channel sorry i don't put more content out but there's so much content out there i prefer to just do things that are meaningful to me as they come up and i hope they're meaningful to you as well so that's me andy vilker saxophone geek Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.